you are going to learn higher skill retouching in just 10 minutes. Stick around with me for just 10 minutes if you really want to learn how to retouch your skin without losing details using frequency separation. First, you need to understand what frequency separation is before you learn how to use it. Now, imagine you are working on this photo and you want to smooth the skin, but you still want to keep the details like the textures, you don't want the image to look flat. That is where frequency separation actually comes in. Frequency separation is like separating your image into two layers. One layer, which is the low frequency, which contains all the colors present on your image, and another layer, which is the high frequency, which contains all the textures on your image. So to retouch this image, we are first of all going to create the focusing separation layers. Now the first thing we are going to do, we are going to come to our background layer right here and just duplicate our background layer twice by pressing Command J or Control J. So we're going to rename this first layer right here, low frequency or color, low frequency for slash color. All right. Why this um, layer one copy right here? We are going to rename this layer high frequency, high frequency for slash textures. Now, as you can see, we have the low frequency which contains the color and the high frequency which contains the textures. Now, for this low frequency, what we want to do, we want to remove the textures and just leave only the colors for the low frequency. So to do that, we are going to hide our high frequency layer right here by clicking on this icon to hide it. Once we hide it, with our low frequency layer selected, just come to filter, come to blur, and come to Gaussian Blur right here. So once you click on the Gaussian Blur, this is where you need to pay attention. Now this determines how smooth you want your image to be. If you want your image to look really smooth, we are going to use a low Gaussian Blur radius amount. While if you still want to keep texture on your image, you have to use a high Gaussian Blur radius amount. So there is no perfect blur radius, it just varies for the kind of image you are actually going to retouch. Now for this image right here, I'm going to use a Gaussian Blur radius of 12 and hit OK. Now the reason why I used to have is that I want the image to be smooth and also I want to keep textures on the image. Now if I use 12 and I feel this image is looking too smooth, I'm going to do another frequency separation again and instead of using 12, I'm going to use a higher number because I feel the image is looking too smooth. Now if I use 12 and I feel the image is not smooth enough, I'm going to use a low blur radius number like 11 or 10 until I feel it's OK. So like I said, there is no perfect blur radius for your image. Just try it and see what works for you. But if you want your image to be smooth, use a low radius. If you want to retain texture or keep texture on your image, use a high frequency version blur radius. All right? So you can see right now, if I zoom in on this image, you can see the textures are no longer on the image. We only have the colors. If I click on this high frequency texture right here and I turn it on, you can see we have our texture back. If I turn it off, we have only the colors. If I turn it on, we have the textures. Now that we've removed the textures for this our color layer, it's time to remove the colors from our texture layer. And to do that, come to your image right here and click on apply image right here. For me, what you want to do, make sure your blending mode is changed to subtract because we want to subtract the color from the texture layer. All right? So once you change your blending mode to subtract, come to your layer. So once you click on layer, you can see it's on merge. So since we want to subtract the color, just select the color layer right here. So click on color layer, all right? Now from here, what we want to do, change the scale to 2%, okay? And the offset to 128. And this works, and just click on okay. So right now, looking at this image, you can see the colors are no longer on the image. We only have the textures on the image. So we separated the colors from the texture layer. Now to bring back the image, to make the image blend as one again, what we want to do is to come to our blending option, change it from normal to linear light right here. All right, so this first layer right here consists of our textures. So if I turn off this color layer, you can see we have the texture. The texture are now more visible. If I turn off the texture layer, you can see we have the color right here. So if I just group these two layers right here and just turn them off and on, we are going to see there will not be any difference on our image. All right, so right now it's turned off. If I turn it on, we're not going to send it friend. If I turn it off, no difference. Turn it on, no difference. That is because this two layer right here, which consists of the texture and color, are actually what makes up this image. Now that we've separated our texture and our color layer, it's time to start retouching the skin. But before we do that, I'm just going to duplicate my texture layer by pressing on Command J. Once I duplicate it, I'm going to hold Option or Alternative if I'm using a window. So if you hold Option or Alternate and just come to the middle between this high frequency texture copy and the high frequency, you're going to see this clip icon. 
just click it just click it and just going to clip like this now what we want to do from here just come to your blend mode of this your high frequency texture copy and change it from linear light to normal all right so we are good to go now after that if you want to work non-destructively that is if you make a mistake instead of starting all over again you can actually erase that mistake and start from that particular place this is what you want to do so to work non-destructively just click on your low frequency layer right here which is the color and just add a new empty layer now this empty layer right here is where you're going to be brushing on if you want to smooth your skin so you can just rename this empty layer brush brush here layer all right so brush here so this is where we want to be brushing if we want to smooth the skin all right so we are good to go we have our low frequency we contain the color we have a high frequency we contain the texture now to return this image the first thing we want to do is to remove the blemishes from the image so you can see there are some blemishes right here and also there are some blemishes on the forehead now since blemishes are textures we are going to be working on this high frequency texture copy right here which is the first one now once you select this layer right here which is this high frequency texture copy layer once you select it, the next thing you want to do is to pick your close stamp tool. So come to your toolbar, pick your close stamp tool. Once you pick your close stamp tool, make sure you are using a soft one brush. For your mood, make sure your mood is set to normal, opacity is set to 100, and flow is set to 100, align is selected, and current layer is selected. So if you are working on this high frequency texture layer, make sure current layer is selected and not current and below, all right? Now to remove blemishes, with your close stamp tool selected, all you have to do is hold option, or alternate if you're using a windows and just sample from a close by area what i mean by sample is click from a close by area once you hold alternate and just paint any blemishes you want to remove like that and it's gone so auto option to sample paint over the blemishes and also increase your brush size according to the blemishes you want to remove so if you want to remove a big blemishes use a big brush size if you want to use if you want to remove a small blemishes use a small brush size all right so since it's a small blemish is right here, I'm going to reduce my brush size. And to reduce your brush size and increase your brush size, you can use the square bracket key on your keyboard to increase and decrease your brush size, all right? So just remove the blemishes for, from your image like this. So put option or alternate to sample from a close by area and just paint on any blemishes you want to remove. Any blemishes you are seeing on your image, just like this. So when you're doing this, make sure you actually take your time to do it because it's very important when we remove blemishes okay one more right here okay let's see the before and after see the before and the after so take a look at the blemishes right here they are gone the before and the after all right take a look at the one on the forehead the before and the after all gone now it's time to smooth the skin now to smooth the skin we're going to be using the mixer brush tool so come to your toolbar again and pick your mixer brush tool once you pick your mixer brush tool make sure you're using a soft one brush as well very important and also make sure your clean brush after each stroke is selected all right so clean brush after each stroke is selected also you can click on this job right icon and click on clean brush so that if there's any color right here it's going to be on transparent once you do that for your wet make sure you're using 30 all right wet 30 loose 30 mix doesn't really matter flow 20 and sample all layers selected because we are going to be brushing on this empty layer that's why sample all layer is selected but if you're working directly on this low frequency or color, you don't have to check this one because you're working directly on the low frequency. And the disadvantage of working directly on the low frequency, if you make any mistake, you are going to delay the low frequency portion and start all over again when you're brushing. So by brushing on this empty layer, if you make a mistake, you can actually erase it or just delete this layer. Since it's an empty layer, you can just delete it and create another empty layer. So that's why I like brushing on the empty layer. So make sure sample layer is selected. Now to brush, just hide your high frequency layer, which is the texture layer, because right now we want to mix only the color to make the image look smooth. So we'll click on the high frequency texture layer and just hide it. Now you can see we have the colors. So if I turn it back on, the, color, the textures are back. If I turn it off, we have just the color. So what I'm going to do right now, I just want to mix colors. So I'm going to be mixing the colors on the highlight separately and also mix the color on the shadow separately. And also the harsh transition, I'm going to mix the color right there just to smoothen out the harsh transition on the image. Also, if you want to work on a bigger portion like this highlight right here, make sure you're using a big brush size. If you want to work on a small portion like this highlight on the nose, make sure you're using a small brush size. It's very important. All right, so I'm going to brush on this forehead right here. I'm going to mix the colors of this highlight on the forehead right here. And by doing this, I'm just going to make the image look smooth. All right, and also I'll come to the shadow part and just mix this part right here for the shadow mix the color right here 
like I said, by doing this, the image is going to be smooth. And if I feel the image is looking too smooth, I can just reduce the opacity of this my brush here layer. Or I can create another focus separation action and just use a high blur radius. That is if I feel the image is looking too smooth after I finish painting. Now let me just show you before and after what I'm doing so you can actually get the idea of what I'm trying to do. So I'm going to turn on my high texture layer again. So take a look at this image, take a look at the forehead, see the before and the after. The before and the after. So I feel it's okay. I still have the textures and it's looking good. The before and the, and the after. So 12 works for me. All right, so it's individual preference. If you feel it's too smooth, you can go higher. If you feel it's not smooth enough, you can go lower. Like I said, it's individual preference. But this is how it works. I just want you to understand how it works so that you can use it for your own image. So I'm going to continue doing this. I'm going to brush in the highlights separately, the shadow separately, and the transition separately. So make sure you are increasing and decreasing the brush size according to the parts of the blemishes you are actually working on. Very important. All right. I'm going to brush on this shadow right here separately like this. Okay. Also, this part right here under the eyes, I'm going to brush on it separately like this. All right, so we'll finish doing the skill work for this image. Let's see the before and after. See the before and the after. The before and the after. See so if I zoom in, you can see we still have the textures and the image is looking smooth. Now, this is how you can do your skin retouching. Now, let me just do a quick bonus for you. If you want to fix the eye bag, as you can see right here, to fix this kind of eye bag, what you want to do is to create a stand visible layer by pressing the command option shift E. After that, pick your patch tool and just select the eye bag like this. Okay. From here, drag it down a little bit like so. All right. So like this works. Once you drag it down, just come to your edit, click on fade patch selection right here. Once you click on it, just drag this opacity all the way down and see how it looks. So I think 50 works for me for this image. I use 50, so 50 works. All right, so Command D or Control D to deselect. So see the before and the after. The before and the after. So that's how you can fix that. Another thing, let's just whiten the eyes. So come to this action. By the way, if you want this action, check the link in the description below of this video. I hope this video is no more than 10 minutes already. So um, I'm going to click on Eyes and Teeth Whitening right here and just paint on the eyes like this. All right, just to whiten it just like this and do the same thing for this other eyes like this. Okay, all right. And from here, I'm going to reduce the opacity a little bit like so. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to make the lips pop and the eyes pop a little bit. So come up with my action again. Click on this on sharpen face mask, eyes and lips. All right, by the way, check make user blue to get this action. Once I do that, I'll pick my normal brush tool and just paint on the eyes like this to sharpen it a little bit. And also paint on the lips just to add more details on the lips, as you can see. So take a look at the lips and the eyes. See the before and the after. The before and the after. So that just adds details to the lips. To add a contrast to this image, just come to the action again and click on this switch tone right here. So this switch tone works. I'm going to reduce the opacity a little bit. All right, like this works. Also, I'll cut my adjustment layer. Like I said, it's just a bonus. And comes my levels. Just move this levels part inside. Okay, the shadow part inside. And take the highlights part outside a little bit just to add more contrast. So, the before and the after. So, basically, this is how I color code the other slide of this image. So, this is the first one. And the second one. Depends on what you want. Now, if you want the skin to be more darker, you can just come to this rich tone. And just take the opacity up and it's going to be more darker so you can gradually reduce the opacity down until you like it like i said individual prefer individual preference rather so let's see the before and after of select form and where we are right now so these are image originally see the before and the after the before and the after now this is how you can retouch any type of image using focus separation and if you are still confused about how to get the right focus separation gushing blur videos for any type of image i explain in details in this video right here so if you want to watch that, click on this video right here. I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay creative.